Let me guess, when you first set up your website, which could have been years ago, you put the most important pages into your menu, you sort of based it on what you see other people in your industry doing, or maybe your web designer just said, these are the pages that I build for people and that's what your website still has up there now. If that's true for you, I'm not surprised. I think so often we build our websites because we saw someone else's template or we thought that that's the way that things were supposed to go and then we don't really think about things things like our website menus, because who thinks about things like that? Apparently just me. But having a really clear, organized navigation helps people navigate their way around your site really easily. That's why we call it a navigation. <laughs> and thinking about what are the most important things that you can put into your menu or whether you need more than one menu to make things even easier for people to move around can not only help keep your visitors on your site longer, it can make it easier for them to move around and find what they're looking for. And it can help Google understand how the pages of your website fit together and what are the most important things that you want Google to show to new searchers. So in this video, which is part of our site structure series, I will be talking all about ways to maybe rethink the menu on your website so that you let Google know what's most important and make it easier for your visitors to navigate. Hi, I'm Meg Casebolt, the founder of Love It First Search, where we help online entrepreneurs to show up in search results and then turn those new visitors into leads, subscribers, and sales. Today, I'm going to be talking about something you probably haven't thought about since you built your website, which is your menu. A menu is something that's really important, especially when people visit your website for the first time and they're trying to get to know you. But a lot of times we just go with what are the industry standards. So I want you, as we're talking through this, to think about what your current menu looks like and ways that you could make it easier for people to move around your site. The first thing that every website should have is if you're using a logo, make sure that it's really clear and crisp looking. If I see a really pixelated looking logo, I'm like, that looks a little, a little wonky, right? A little strange. You also wanna make sure that your logo links to your homepage. So if people are struggling with where they need to go next on the site, they should be able to click your logo and find their way home. You may also want to include a link to your homepage in your navigation. This is a personal choice. Some people want that there, especially if they're working with a crowd that's a little less tax savvy, they want them to be able to make their way to the homepage always. I personally think that for my audience, most people know that the logo will get them to the homepage and therefore I don't have a home link in my navigation. So that's your personal choice. Based on what you like to click when you're moving around the internet, you can make that choice. And also based on what your ideal client is like. Maybe they would know that, maybe they wouldn't make it easy for them to navigate. When in doubt, leave a home link in your main navigation. There has been a rise in recent years to have actually two menus on your website. Many people do this, it's not required, but sometimes it can make it a little bit easier for people to navigate by having a primary menu, which helps people find your services or figure out what it is that you do, and then having a secondary menu that gives more information about your company. I've heard these referred to as the primary navigation being customer centric. What are the things that they can buy from you? What are the needs that they have? What are they looking for? And then the secondary menu being company centric. So if they want to find out more about you, if they want to apply for a job with you, if they want to contact you or dig deeper into your history, that kind of stuff can go into the secondary menu. So as you're thinking about the things that people want to get from your website, think about what is customer centric, the things that they need in order to make a purchase or hire you, and what things are company centric, which might be more focused on your history and more about who you are versus more about your customers. Now I've definitely seen primary menus that have a lot of information in them. Every time that you add another link to your primary menu, you're decreasing the value of that page in Google's eyes. And also you're making it a little bit more complicated for people to find what they're looking for. So try to keep your primary menu to, I would say less than seven, 
options that may work for you that may not but we want to have it so that way people don't get overwhelmed and confused because a confused mind says no figure out what are those key pages on your site stick them into the primary menu and if it's not one of those key pages then you can leave it out and make it easy for them to navigate from the footer from the secondary menu or from a link on your home page now just because the secondary menu is secondary doesn't mean it doesn't have value you may want to use your secondary menu to include a space for people to sign up for your email list. You may want to include a search bar on your secondary menu where people who are looking around who don't see what they need in that main menu can still find what it is that they're looking for. I like to use social links in my secondary menu. I know that a lot of in-person businesses use that space to include their phone number or an email address, a very easy, quick way for people to connect with you without needing to dig through everything and visit your contact form and go to your footer. It's right there along the top so people can get that phone number and give you a call right away. Are there things that should go in both the main menu and the secondary menu? Maybe. I think about things like the about page or the contact form. Those are both kind of customer centric and kind of company centric because when people are making a decision about when to work with you, they may want to contact you, but also they're trying to contact you so that it's much more company focused. So if you're going to have things on both venues, that's fine. You can put them in both places, especially if Filling out a contact form is a primary call to action on your page. If you're a service business and you want to be booking discovery calls, having the contact form link in more than one place is a great idea. All right, let's make this more fun. I pulled my audience, asked for their questions about menus, and we're going to do the rest of this is as rapid fire Q&A to answer your questions about this. Question one, what should I call the things on my menu? Please make this as clear as you possibly can. Do not call your blog post mute. Things. <laughs> Call it your blog or articles or something that people who aren't familiar with you can navigate their way around. Instead of what we do, who we are, who we serve. I never know what I'm supposed to click on there when I see that on someone's website because I'm like, well, I am who you serve maybe, but I also want to know who you are and I don't know what comes first. So instead, let's keep it really simple. Instead of who we are, just call that page about. There's a reason that copywriters call it the about page. That's just what it's universally known as. Let's make it clear to people what's happening there. And the about page is pretty much the who we are and who we serve. So let's consolidate those and make it easy for people to find what you do and who you serve and who you are. And then in terms of the what we do section, you can keep that pretty straightforward and call it services or shop, or you can be more specific. If you have an e-commerce site and you have specific categories of things that you sell, just have the categories and let people find and go directly to those category pages. It used to be more of the industry standard to just say services or work with me, but now what it, we're seeing works a little bit better than that. Services, it's not wrong to say services, but what we're seeing works really well is to say the specific services that you're doing. So if you're a copywriter, instead of having something on your website that says services, have it say copywriting. And that way Google knows exactly what services you're providing and what it is that you do. You get that keyword into your main navigation and it's clear to people what they're getting from you. Especially if you have multiple services, maybe you want to have the different services listed out on your main navigation. Next question. I have too many things in my main navigation. Can I do a drop down? Yes, you can, but you have to do it smartly. A drop down does not negatively impact your SEO. In fact, it can improve it if it's organized in a really smart way and it's HTML, not JavaScript. Google does not like JavaScript in menus. If you don't know what that means, you're probably okay. <laughs> But drop downs can also be a little bit annoying for users, especially if they don't know that it is a drop down, then they might still be looking around for it. So if you have a drop down, make sure that your theme also includes maybe a little arrow or carrot to say, hey, there's something going on down here. Come check it out. And if you only have like one or two things in the drop down, just turn it into the page. <laughs> Here's another best practice for drop downs. Don't put drop down links underneath a link. If you're going to have a drop down, just have that be kind of an umbrella term for what you're going to have in the drop down instead of having a page that they can click on, but also they can click on the sub pages. That can be a little bit confusing for your users. 
Next question. I'm an e-commerce shop and I have 50 different products. How do I make sure that people can find what they're looking for? If you're in that position and you have lots of products, I would say more than 10, 12 products in your product line. Either you can link to specific categories and let people scroll through from there, or you can do what's called a mega dropdown menu. These tend to work better than individual category dropdowns where instead of, you know, just one single column, you have multiple columns that show up and people can navigate through there. I think Shopify has that as an option and you can always hire a developer to help you set up how you want to organize this once you've got it figured out. And our last question, how do we make sure that our website is really easy to navigate on a mobile device? The secret here is to make sure sure that when you shift into a, the mobile version of your site, you use what's called a hamburger menu. It's called a hamburger because it has three little lines and sort of looks like burgers with the buns. I didn't come up with these terms. They're weird. I know it's the three little line thing. They call it a hamburger menu. I don't know. <laughs> hamburger menus have now become really well known among people who are navigating on their mobile devices. So people are used to looking for them and finding them. And then you can have the menu kind of pull out at that point. So people know how to move their way around without it taking up the entire screen on a mobile device device. If you have more questions that I didn't answer in this video, make sure to comment below and we can either answer them in the comment box or make a follow-up video. If you're doing an overhaul of your entire site, you may want to check out our entire series about site structure. So I started by explaining the architecture of your entire site and how to make it organized. We also talked about how to lay out your homepage, how to make sure that things are linking in between. And then we have this video and then my next video will, will be all about categories and tags and how you can use those in order to help people navigate through your site. If you liked this video, make sure to like it. And if you don't want to miss a future episode, make sure to subscribe to the channel and get more tips on how to maximize people coming into your site and minimize the amount of time you're spending on marketing.